Are you ready? The Cornelia Stephanie Show. Wake up to love your call to action. Join Cornelia as she empowers others to live heaven on earth. Cornelia teaches listeners how to be the authority over yourself, embracing your inner guru. Feel yourself uplifted into limitless expansion, integrating ease and grace in a changing world. This show will cover topics such as unconditional love, your physical body, how to be in extraordinary relationships, create financial and emotional wealth, embracing entrepreneurship in the new earth. Hello, everyone. Thank you for tuning in to today's show, The Cornelia Stephanie Show, and it's Friday for our series, Stories of Hope. My first guest is Drosella Mogore. She has quite an interesting journey that she's lived. She fled Rwanda, and she now lives in Tennessee. Uh, her background is the diversity trust builder. She's an experienced former Rwanda, Rwandan parliament, parliamentarian. She's a number one best-selling author, an international speaker, an executive consultant, a media personality, and a creator of the diversity in action system. She's worked with public and private and nonprofit agencies for more than 30 years. Drosella knows what it's like to feel vulnerable, oppressed, and unheard after and before being forced to flee her country and become a refugee. As a result, Drosella is building a global movement supporting CEOs and corporate decision makers to champion diversity in their industry so that they can build trust within their teams and increase productivity and revenues up to 50%. Welcome to the show today, today Drosella. Thank you for having me, Cornelia. Oh my yes. Oh my goodness. What an amazing journey you are on and what an amazing life. So now you're here to apply all of your wisdom and everything that you've learned in your life. And you're helping so many people with uh, various different ways to come together and treat each other with respect and honor. So uh, is, is that what you want to talk about today? Yes. Yes. This is what I want to talk about today. Yeah, so what, you know, what do you see uh, as far as treat each other how we want to be treated? That was what you were mentioning in the green room. When I was a parliamentarian and a member of the government, I was treating, treated like a queen, working on the red carpet. But when I became a refugee in 2009, I felt like I was treated like a second class person. And nobody, nobody should be treated like a second class. I also believe that there are millions and millions of people in the world who are not treated with respect and dignity by the authorities that are tasked to protect and promote them. And doesn't have to be that way. This is why by feeling the pain of those people, and seeing the struggle, even in my community and in different organizations, as they say, we have to be the change we want to be. I want to give forward to the world by helping people, decision makers, by providing tools and speaking about why diversity matters. Because we are divine, diverse human beings, all of us. And no talent, no skill, no brilliance should be left behind. Yeah, I love that so much. You know, uh, what what you're talking about is for people to have, live and act in their high esteem. To, to, to have not a low esteem, but to have a high esteem. And if each person within themselves comes from acting, living from a place of high esteem and honor, then that's the that's the way that we're going to, to treat each other, right? So you had the experience of being, you know, treated um, 
with honor and dignity and respect being treated really high. And now um, when you became, when you, when, when you experienced the opposite, did, was that after you became a refugee? It's before then, because I became a refugee because of my ideas. So oh. my, it, I, sharing my ideas made me to be seen as a threat. Or uh, when we say that more ideas in French, they say autant de tête, autant de day. So more ideas, more creativity, more innovation. And some leaders are proning that, but in fact, you don't see them walking the talk. In, in the book uh, with grace and grit, um, inspirational guidepost for women in business, I did write a chapter about challenging the status quo because in the diversity areas also, there are many people who are saying, yes, we are open to diversity or you are pro-diversity, but you don't see concrete actions that are leading to transformation. And this is why I created the diversity in action system to take people from declaring the commitment to celebrating results and celebrating their teams and see the real transformation of inclusion in our communities. Wow, that's so good. Inclusion in our communities. And really, it's like, again, you were being uh, held back, or should we say oppressed, uh, you know, suppressed, when you started um, becoming more and more empowered and wanting to honor your voice, wanting to honor what was coming through you as a unique individual that you are. And that's when when um, you were being you were being held back. Is that right? That is right. That is right. And, and I do not want anybody to be held back because of their ideas, their opinion, because of who they are, um, being what do believe. So all of us have the brilliance and the uniqueness we have to share with the whole world. And when we work together, we win together. And same for the companies. I believe that where the companies thrive, our communities also are thriving. This is why we have to think win-win. So to give people what they want. If you are an employer, give to employees what they want. And if you are an employee, give to the employer what they want. And if you are a leader, you, uh, I think it's John Maxwell who said that you can love people without leading them but you cannot lead people without loving them. So we oh, have to lead with love. Yeah, that's really, really beautiful. Since you are out there in the field working with companies, working with people, you know, uh, if you're an employer, give the people what they want. What is it that the people want? People want to be heard, seen, engaged, celebrated, you know, uh, and, and in this, after COVID, uh, people want also flexibility. Uh, people just, it's not about the outcome. It's about being relatable, building relationship, to know your ships, to know what they are struggle with. Because in order to turn your employees in real loyal ambassadors, we have to know them and to make them feel valued and uh, contributing uh, agent of your company. So I think the way even recruiting people was done in the past doesn't work no more. So people have just to be more creative and, and people want to see before they come to join you. For example, on the website, one of the things I help people with is creating an attractive uh, manifesto. What how you believe? How do you treat your employees and your partners and your clients? If people will see that, it will attract them and you don't have even to confuse them. They will be loyal to you and they will be your ambassadors forever. Wow. Uh, so what is your website since you spoke about it right now? Let's tell everyone how to get to your website. It's simple. Drosella.com. Drosella.com. Uh, yes. Let's spell it out. Let's spell it out because there's some people that watch, some people yes. listen. It's D-R-O-C-E-L-L-A dot com c-o-n yeah go check it out because i'm definitely going to check it out i think this is so great you know while you're talking the other thing that i think that em employees want is um 
is they want to be able to be empowered. And so one way that they can be empowered, right, is by um, having their boss bring to them a situation of how can we make this better and then adding their ideas into it, right? That would be a way, wouldn't it? Yes, that would be a way and also be transparent. Sometimes when you go through difficult, uh, like financial difficulties, think about them as human beings who want to succeed. But when you hide that, and also I, I invite people to go beyond the job description. The people we are hiring have other talents and skills which are not in the job description. Ask people what they like to do. And when they do what they like and they enjoy, they'll just be so productive and innovative and then you, you will be happy and they will be happy. Yeah, and I think that that was actually one of my questions. I wanted to ask you to give us a quick, what does the employer want from the employee? And they they want uh, happy, dependable people that they can that can work there and that can bring about the results in the company yes. they're, they're, yes. they're looking for. So uh, D-R-O-C-E-L-L-A dot com is the website. And is there any social media people can find you on? Yes, people can find me on the LinkedIn. And if they go to my website, because I'm very passionate also to teach people how to leverage language diversity, because as our diverse community grow in many countries and worldwide and countrywide, so we want to be able to communicate with everybody. So I did uh, have uh, on my website five ways to leverage language diversity for profit and success. And you can have that download and I invite you to share with your friends and anybody who would need it. And if there are colleges and universities who want me to talk about the importance of language diversity, I'm happy. My grandson who is four years old is now learning six languages. So I'm happy oh. to teach other people to speak those languages and to use them. Oh. That's so good. I, I love I love I love what you're doing. I love where you're coming from. I feel so blessed that you came on the show today to inspire us with what it is that you're you you're wanting to the movement that you're creating. I appreciate that. I want to thank you so much for coming on the show. And let's you and I connect on LinkedIn, but I definitely also want to have you on again for another longer show so we can talk a little bit more and open things up. Thank you. Thank you for what you do and for having me. Oh, thank you so much. We're going to take a break on the Cornelia Stephanie Show. We'll be right back, everyone. Welcome back, everyone. I am so excited to introduce our next guest, Stephanie Ann. She's an attorney and recipient of the Governor's Award for Advocacy with Survivors of Domestic Violence, Having triumphed over narcissistic abuse and relationship trauma, she offers profound insights into healing and growth. She is an emotional freedom technique practitioner and empowers individuals to release emotional blockages and embrace their truest self. Her legal background adds a unique perspective on dealing with narcissists in court, while her role as a dedicated mother enhances her ability to guide others. Welcome to the show today, Stephanie Ann. Hi, thank you so much for having me today. Well, the first thing that pops into my head when I'm, you know, introducing you is a, a very interesting visual of you being in court with uh, the narcissist. <laughs> <laughs> that that not... probably wasn't easy. It is not easy, and especially if you are in a relationship with the person you are sitting across from, you know, you've been in that abusive relationship. It's very hard to sit there and to be unemotional and to be completely detached from everything they're saying, knowing that they are just spewing hate and lies and untruths about you. It's very um, challenging. You, when, when, yeah, I can, I can imagine uh, when you, is that, is, did you become an EFT practitioner before or after? I became one in the middle. Oh, in the middle. Uh, yeah, yeah. So it was in the middle of my second marriage. 
where we had separated and I was just desperately seeking something. And what's funny about it is I, I had a friend post it on Facebook that there was a, a class. And so I thought I was signing up to work with a practitioner, but I actually signed up to become a practitioner and I had never done EFT before, but, you know, I feel like God, the universe source, you know, gives us exactly what we need when we need it. Yeah. And yeah. as a healing modality, I just spent so many months and, and years really perfecting that. Well, it's so important, you know, uh, your emotional body, your emotional life, our core wounding from the past. If you're not feeling it emotionally free, then, uh, you know, that's where the work lies. So uh, healing the emotional body is so important. I wrote a book on uh, how I healed my body using the power of my emotions oh, wow. back in 2013. Wow. Yeah. So I, I, I've been doing emotional processing work for years and years and years and helping many others in the process. So I know this work, but it's so good that the work that you're doing today, the work you're doing, helping others with, you know, the domestic violence and, and, you know, various different ways. And you wanted to talk about a subject today. What do you want to point out today? Yeah. Well, you know, I kind of just wanted to share this, uh, this epiphany revelation I had, you know, I, for years, I felt like I was living a completely different story through a lens of, of why me? And only recently do I feel like I've broken that pattern in my life. Um, I was at my sister's house in Missouri. I got stuck there for six weeks and I was losing my, my eyesight. I had sunburned my eyes so bad in Florida that my eye doctor actually said my my eyes looked like someone took sandpaper and just destroyed them. Oh. And so, you know, I'm sitting at my sister's house just on the bathroom floor, just like, why me, God? Why has all this stuff happened to me? I, you know, spent 17 years within these these two abusive marriages. I had loved ones die of COVID. I lost a home in a hurricane. I lost a home in a house fire. I had a baby born with a, a very rare genetic disorder. You know, when my first ex-husband committed suicide. And so, you know, I'm, I'm sitting here just like, what is going on? And I really felt it was at that moment that um, I wasn't seeing my story clearly. I wasn't seeing my story through the right lens. And it was in that moment that I needed to make the shift and really let go of the victim story that had kept me stuck and trapped for so long. And as I released that old story and put myself as the heroine of my story, I could finally see the lessons. I could finally see what needed to be healed, what needed to be released, what needed to be let go. And ultimately, I was able to, to shift that pattern and break those patterns in my life. And so that's what I, I use as inspiration for hope, because so many of us, especially after 2020, you know, so many of us are just, we're trapped in that victim story. And when we're stuck in that victim story, we're stuck. You go nowhere. Well, I just want to say thank you so much for being so open and so vulnerable in your sharing because of the way that you articulated everything it was really, really sacred and beautiful. So I want to acknowledge you for that. It's very empowering. And I'll put some spiritual woo-woo in here uh, for the divine feminine to claim her power in the way that you did and the way that you're sharing it. So I appreciate that very much. And we're not victims of our circumstance. We're not victims of our life. And the way that you articulated your, uh, you know, your plea or your cry to God that, okay, it's interesting when you were talking about your eyes that you couldn't see, that you couldn't yeah. see. And then from not seeing to seeing, so you're a wonderful speaker as well. And uh, do you work with people one-on-one -on -one now? Is that what you do? Or how how do you work with people? So I, I was working with people one-on-one -on -one doing EFT. 
Um, my, as I mentioned earlier, my the first ex-husband passed away just a month ago. And because of that, and because we have several small children together, I just don't have the the space to hold for other people right now as I'm using that for my children. Um, but in in the near future, I will have, I will go back to offering services and, you know, as a coach or a guide or something. But just right now, I'm just sharing my story, putting it out there. I am working on a couple books right now and then just taking the time to be with my boys and heal. Yeah, I think that's so that's so beautiful is really grieving the losses, really making room for, you know, all the losses, you know, like looking back at all the things that that we've had to let go of. Um, so mm -hmm. I think it's an important piece. And I'm sorry for your loss as well. Thank for, you. Yeah. I mean, that's really soon. We definitely want to have you come back on the show, you know, in the in the future when you're ready to uh, you know, uh maybe bring your books out or whatever and have another I would love to maybe a, a longer conversation that would be fine because sometimes we we have one hour shows that we do as well so um where where can people you know follow your journey I know that you're in in a um in a, a deeper process right now but you know if they want to look you up how can people find you I am currently on LinkedIn right now and I'm on Facebook and so if anyone wants to follow me on Facebook, I do post a lot on domestic violence and narcissistic abuse, as well as, you know, sharing my life. Um, and yeah, so you can find me on those two places right now. Yeah, great. We definitely should also connect on LinkedIn as well. So, um, so how old are your children, Stephanie? I have a an eleven year old boy, a nine year old boy, and a two year old boy. Wow! So they they keep me very, very, very busy right now. And you know, going back to what what we were saying about um, EFT and emotions, I've raised them to be aware of emotions. I've you know emotion coached them their whole life, and in fact, my kids do EFT as well, and and so there is such um, power there. And totally. it's so good to to teach our children this because the last thing I want is my children my age sitting in therapy, having to rework and reprocess all the stuff in their life. And so, you know what, let's teach them when they're little and normalize it in their life. You know, that's, that's, what so, I that's, that's so good. It actually needs to be taught in, in the school systems as well, it, you know. Uh, yeah, totally, because that will definitely pre will prevent, you know, everybody puts everything always on mental health. It's mental health. It's mental health. And I do agree that we, we have big, huge mental health issues, but nobody ever brings out the emotional health and well-being that people are feeling that is causing them to act on those feelings hence committing suicide uh, because people yeah. just have so much pain. They, they don't see a way out. And I just want to say that, um, you know, what you're teaching your kids now, when you were asking God, why me, um, what you're doing, teaching your kids now, teaching them that, you know, we're human beings and we all have emotions and that it's not okay for the men to suck it up and get on with it. And the boys exactly. to suck it up to really exactly. actually feel all of your feelings it's such an important piece so it is. you're doing yeah. you're doing really good work thank you thank yeah. you and I'm sorry if you hear screams in the background here they were supposed to be at school today wow. according to my calendar <laughs> no problem no problem I I think it's great what you're doing you know teaching um the boys how to feel their feelings, how to process their emotions and, you know, uh, so that they can uh, really fully embody that, uh, you know, those emotions, because like you said, yeah. you don't need to wait until years later uh, before we yes. teach, you know, these, these life skills, life survival. Exactly. Exactly. And, you know, we, we do the, sitting with the emotions and releasing the emotions, but I also tap into the person we are becoming. 
And so about a month or two ago, my nine-year-old, he told me he was tapping in school because he wants to be a professional soccer player. So he was tapping into the positives. Like, I'm so good at soccer. I know I'm going to be a professional soccer player. I know how to play. I'm going to be the next Cristiano Ronaldo, you know, whatever you think, you know, that in the nine-year-old brain, but that's important too. Like not well, just that's- the, the healing, it's tapping into who we want to become and believing it. Absolutely. Absolutely. So that's, this is, this is wonderful. You're raising, you're raising some, some beautiful young men who are going to be the leaders of our new earth because it is about the children that's what we have yes. mistakes of the past it's behind and now here we go so stephanie ann thanks so much for coming on you're amazing thank you going. and um we'll see you again in the future thank you for sure Bye. have a good day thank you you too uh we're going to take a break on the cornelia stephanie show we'll be right back Welcome back, everyone. My next guest is Teresa Carnegie. She's a writer and published author and self-publishing coach. During an 18-month time period, she experienced so much trauma so fast it overflowed her cup, bringing up things that she had uh, repressed throughout her life. And it impacted so greatly that this ended up being a huge transition for her. While healing mentally, emotionally, and physically, she began writing, which led her career in a completely different direction and one that she never would have previously imagined. After receiving several concussions, anxiety, and panic attacks, mental wellness became a passion for her. And this is the number one reason that she self-published a mental wellness workbook with journal that takes a holistic approach to daily life. Sharing with others some of the different modalities and techniques that have helped her, but also giving away through it all one step at a time. Uh, The changes trauma brings into your life can be better than what you could have ever imagined. Uh, She should know she should she never expected to write or publish books, teach others how to publish their own books and even help spark the creativity in people because she had spent her entire life believing that she wasn't creative. Welcome to the show today, Teresa. Hi, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Yes. So my goodness. So you have to, I have to ask, uh, you know, you experienced trauma for a short time. This is what stood out to me. Um, And I was thinking while I was reading your bio is that, how blessed you are that you only experienced it for a short time. Uh, I wouldn't say only experienced it for a short time, but that short period had, uh, it had quite a wallop and it, um, there was a lot of grief. There was a lot of death. There was a lot of injuries. There was a lot of um, more than one concussion and those are not fun to get from. And it just, it was just so much so fast. Um, I mean, life is full of trauma really, isn't it? And... Well, you know, I, I'm just, <laughs> I'm, I'm saying, cause I experienced so much childhood trauma, uh, you know, uh, long, and, you know, yeah. uh, lots of, lots of other traumas that I had to uh, overcome. So that's why I'm saying not for a short time, but for a long time, <laughs> it's like, yes, you know, so that's what I meant by that. So I didn't I mean, understand. sorry. <laughs> um, so now do you, are you, are you open to talking about what trauma you experience or is this not something yeah. that you want to yeah. No, I uh, I've been through a lot of therapy and worked with a lot of people, and I'm happy to share because we all think what we go through, we're alone. We think that everybody has the same thing. We think that you know nothing is special. We think that nobody understands us. And in actuality, if we just all start talking about it, we'd understand we had so much in common. We are all experiencing so much pain and so much suffering and having to get through so much. So I have no problem. <laughs> Good. So tell us about what was the short, the trauma that you experienced during that time that was so much in, a, in, in that short amount of time. Well, it started actually, it was um, a week. Uh, it was uh, this week is an anniversary. Um, it started with the death of my father and we knew it was coming. He had been struggling with cancer, but it's still, it's hard. Right. And a week after that, I was 
sitting at a red light and a, I'm, I'm, you know, 90 year old person just drove right into me and they didn't, they don't have reflexes. And so they rebounded and hit me again. So, um, yeah, that was like two concussions, some great injuries. Um, and it took me a long time to get back from that. Um, but I, you know, you just keep pushing yourself, you know, you gotta get through, you gotta get better. You gotta get back to life. And so I did, I just kept pushing myself and things kept happening. So I, you know, I went back to a job that, um, previously it wasn't the greatest, but I enjoyed it. And then I realized I wasn't, um, I was getting a lot of, um, flack from people who thought I was getting special treatment or just get back to work, or you should be able to do this, or you're milking the system, you're faking it, you know, you hear it all. Um, so that was at the same time that was feeding into me. And then things happen like little things. Like you open up the fridge door and a bottle of water falls down and lands at just the right point on your foot to break your foot. And, you know, just different things like that. So there were three car accidents within 14 months. Lost oh my my father. Yeah. And so lost my father, uh, a friend, a lifelong friend died of cancer. Also, um, about two weeks after my friend passed away, um, I got scabies from trying on clothes in a very reputable clothing place. I would just wow. like to point out. Turns out those are incredibly easy to get. <laughs> and um, the things at work were becoming worse and worse for me to deal with. Um, and I had a pain specialist tell me that my push to just keep going was actually hurting me from getting better. And it really, it's, it just, it was a whole lot all at once. And I went and boom, and I left my job. Um, a month after I left my job, my naturopath passed away. Two months after that, I went to full, I had went to make it a doctor's appointment, which it was only like two weeks after I had last seen her and she closed her practice unexpectedly. They both, he passed from cancer. She got cancer. So there was just a lot of cancer around me. Um, and it just led it to, I was, I was struggling to get out of bed some days and it was really hard to see where is this going to take me? How, like, where am I going to go from here? How am I going to get a job when I'm feeling so down? You know, it was just, you lose your identity a little and you're still trying to get better and you can't figure out how that's all supposed to work together. Um, and I just started writing because it was something to do and, now I actually tell people when you're dealing with a lot of trauma, what is something you always wanted to do? What is something you always wanted to learn? Because I mean, for concussions, there was memory issues. I, I had a lot of problems memory with my memory still do. Um, and when you can't do the things you used to be able to do those, you put a lot of expectations on yourself and you're like, well, why can't I do this? I need to push harder. I need to do this. And then that just hurts you even more and it hinders your, your healing even more. And um, so by learning something new, doing something you always wanted to do, you have no expectations. It's just fun. It's exciting. You're like, Oh, well, I can still learn this. You know, this is, oh, I'm going to try this. And if it takes you like twice as long to learn, you don't care because it's new and you have no expectations. That's and great. It, it just, yeah, I, I highly recommend that to everybody. Do That's a good new. tip. That's a really good tip because I really feel like, you know, most of us here at in this modern day time are suffering from trauma, whether mm -hmm. it's trauma that we're experiencing right now or it's trauma that we're releasing from the past or from another life or yes. whatever. But, yes. you know, we're all experiencing so much change and so much loss yes. um, that uh, that 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 way of looking at something, uh, you know, learning something, uh, giving giving yourself uh, permission to you know learn something new is a really really great way to do it. You 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 hit the nail on the head with that one. But is and that's the thing is because when you do have all this stuff coming at you, it triggers you for past trauma, and so all that stuff starts coming out, and so it hits almost double hard, right? You know and yeah, you need an outlet. You need something to keep you going. You need something to just dis not distract you, but help you. So you became a writer. You started writing. a writer. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and now you're helping, you know, you you self-published a book. Is the book on Amazon or where's the you know it's funny? Um it's on I have a on all major retailers. I have the very first book I published was a 17-page ebook on solo female travel. 
to encourage women that we are way more confident, uh, capable than society tells us we are and, you know, stuff like that. And then I started doing, um, learning fiction. And while I've been doing fiction, I, that come up with some blocks, you know, putting yourself out there, uh, with the fiction aspect. And so I started doing low content, they're called, um, books, which are journals, notebooks. I've got a planner for if you're a romance reader, movie watcher, it's a planner based on that. And I did the uh, mental wellness workbook uh, that includes a journal in it. And it's just little things, little little things to do that keep you going. And it takes such a holistic approach. It's what I did. So I know that these things help. Is it going to cure you? No, but it is going to help you. And it's so good. You went crazy with all this creativity which is fabulous. Um, My whole where, told I wasn't creative, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. I love this story. Uh, where where can people find these books? Amazon is the good way to do it. Um, under my name is the 17-page uh, ebook, and it's mostly free. Sometimes Amazon decides to charge it, um, but you can find that one on Barnes & Noble and, and different websites like that. Um I had another one. You know, for the people that are listening, um, that are not watching, you know, give us the title like very clearly so that they can later on that they remember and they can later on go to Amazon and type it in. So what is it? Solo Female Travel by Teresa Carnegie. Spell the last name. C-A-R-N-E-G-I-E. And The mental wellness workbook is under my pen name that I do all the low content books of, and that's Imogen Anger, E-N-G-E-R. Yeah. So, um, wow. Are you having like total fun with this new career? I am. I'm now, you know, now I I, I help uh, coaches and and other entrepreneurs learn how to self-publish for themselves so they can help new clients and they can, you know, have another income stream and, you know, I have a membership where people can, to help people spark their creativity. It's fun. I really enjoy it. And never would have thought of it. <laughs> so what do you, what's your plan now moving forward? Like what's, what's next for you? Uh, honestly, I really want to work. I really want to have retreats, writing retreats that take like a self-care look at life and a new things that are new and exciting, like different. And I, cause you should always be bringing different things into your life. You know, once a month, once a week, whatever works for you, something new and exciting and different. And it new and exciting might mean I, I love hot chocolate. I like to go find new cafes, bakeries and try different hot chocolates. And that's, <laughs> that's my, great. my new and exciting sometimes. <laughs> yeah. I really like the idea of the writing retreat. I mean, that's a really like, have you, thought about that like how long the retreats would be a week three weeks I haven't thought of that part yet um I I do know that um at this point I'm thinking of two a year one would be um very self-care based and the other one would be new experience based so haven't really gone past that yet um but I like the idea of both and I thought putting it into one but then I thought well that might be too much so I thought you know separating them might yeah, have I like, yeah I like the idea of writing retreats I think this is good um obviously we, we are staying on a little bit longer um <laughs> so I, I I'm, I'm really enjoying the conversation as well um let's let's uh tell the audience where they can find you on social media. I am one of those people that hides from being seen on social media, but I do have um, Facebook under my name and I do have a group um, called, you know, it's one of those things where you're like, wait, what's it called? Um, (laughs) (laughs) Self-publishing. It's um, yeah. I can't think of it right now. Okay, no problem. No problem. Well, we we've got your information also uh, to find you on Amazon. And is there a website? Do you have a website? I do. Uh, it's going to it's, it's interesting. It's called dapsil.com. D-A-P-S-I-L-E. Um, it's Latin for a little bit of everything. <laughs> oh, okay, good. Well, I definitely um, want to hear more uh, about your membership and all of that. Like I told you, we have um, 
I, I, you know, I meet a lot of entrepreneurs. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have uh, Ashley connect us via email and uh, so that you and I can go a little bit deeper into that discussion about your membership and whatnot. That sounds uh, great. Thank you. I thank you so much for coming on the show today. Thank you. And, um, yes. Thank you so much for coming on and then we'll uh, be in touch. Okay. Okay. Sounds great. Thanks so much. Have a great day. Yeah, Bye. Bye. We're not going to take a break on the Cornelia Stephanie show. We're just going to keep going right now because I have our next guest here. And uh, her name is Maria Shiko, PhD. I hope I'm saying this correctly. She can correct me later if this is not correct. Uh, she's an award-winning educator, mentor, author, and entrepreneur. She uniquely combines sciences, metaphysics, and arts to inspire change aligned with higher purpose and joy in her clients. She's a former university professor turned entrepreneur. As an accomplished author, her work has been published in 50 plus journals, including advances in complementary and alternative medicine and explore holistic. She made appearances on Biz Talk Radio, Mind Body Radio and Women Inspired TV. Uh, her, she's also the author of two books that inspire joyful and creative living, My Brilliant Money Book, and from Russia to Joy. She lives in Boston with her partner. Hello today, Maria. Am I saying this correctly? Uh, hello, Cornelia. Yes, my name is Maria. It's Maria Shiko. So you she were very close. Oh, good. Maria Shiko. So, wow. So what a wonderful uh, journey you are on with you. uh, your books and your creativity and all the media uh, appearances that you've done, what would you like to highlight on today's show? Whatever would be helpful for your listeners. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, well, what what do you like to talk about? So, I I would actually love to talk about joy and creativity. This is these are my favorite topics: joy and creativity, because I feel that if we have more joy and creativity, we would ha be happier people and we would have a better society. So how do people um, that feel overwhelmed in their life right now and they feel overwhelmed by what's going on in the world, um, they feel disconnected from their creativity, um, they can't find their joy, where do they start? <laughs> Great question. I think they can start by realizing that these problems will never stop and they will always continue. They Today, it's one problem, then you turn TV, it's going to be another problem. And my recommendation would be to actually disconnect a little bit from, not ignore the problems, but to disconnect somewhat from a lot of stress that is coming from outside of us and that is kind of making us very, very small. I think the purpose or the energy of that external stress is to make us overwhelmed make us feel distracted, disconnected from ourselves and our purpose. And it serves as noise. It serves as noise so that we're not really stepping into our full potential, our full power of who we are as spiritual beings, as human beings. And when we start recognizing it is for what it is, destruction, then we are able to connect more to ourselves and the next step, I cannot recommend one step for everyone, but the next step is actually to listen to oneself, to maybe take time to meditate, go out for a walk. Creativity can be expressed in so many different ways. It can be painting, dancing, listening to music, singing in the shower, doodling, or just doing nothing, really just doing nothing. I think that is very needed to even access creativity is to actually do nothing because otherwise it's always a response, a reaction. And when we can restore our nervous system a little bit and come back to more of a empty, but also full space, then we are able to reconnect with our joint creativity. You know, everything that you said is such good, wholesome advice. You know, it's it's especially the part that 
um, you know, the noise and the distra distraction and everything that's going on is always going on. But now it's time for you to listen more and for you to get quiet more and even um, not do anything because out of the constant having to do, constantly having to show up, that that adds that pressure. Uh, like my, you know, one of the things that I absolutely love doing is I love being in my routine, right? I love being, getting up in the mornings and, uh, you know, taking my time and then going out for nature and coming home and exercising and then being in my creative flow and my creative ideas and what it is that I want to do. And so uh, feeling free to be in my creative abilities, right? feeling that freedom to be in those creative abilities. And even right now, as many of us more entrepreneurs that are out there that are wanting to uh, share our products and services with people, um, we need an outlet of creativity. We need that outlet because that, that, that has to, we have to have a place to express our creativity. Even right now, you and I, are expressing our creativity right now. It's happening. Absolutely. And Absolutely. there's so much joy in that. There's so much joy in that because we're talking about life force energy being expressed on this platform. And so how great is that? Yes. Right? Yes. Yes. So I, I, I think this is an important piece and I, I, I love that you brought that up, that you want to speak about joy and creativity, because even the other day I was speaking to my niece and she was having a hard time and she said, I just can't seem to find my joy. Mm -hmm. So, and that's, that's why uh, when I was helping her go through that process, but feeling how many people feel overwhelmed by life right now. And sometimes it's not just even the news, it's just the change. You know, you're moving households, you're quitting a job, you're starting a new job, you had a new baby, there's more baby, there's, and you already have a, a family. So there's a lot that people are experiencing and going through and to really make time and make room for the desire, I want my joy back. I want my <laughs> I think as long as we only identify as human beings, I think it's quite it's quite challenging, you know, it's quite challenging to really fully experience full joy and prioritize it because you know, even in the entrepreneurial world and I have been an entrepreneur an entrepreneur for now like four or five years after having transitioned I feel that nothing changes like whether you work for a corporate or you work for yourself unless you make internal changes about who you are and how you wish to approach life and approach your work and approach your timetable and schedule and routine and change Nothing changes because you will just take old habits with you into a new environment. It's like changing partners, just changing and getting a new, a new person does not change anything. <laughs> so I feel it's very much inner work, inner awakening to, to a degree and having this idea that your purpose is not only care, chop wood and carry water, but <laughs> your purpose is actually to have a cup of tea and take 15 minutes for that <laughs> and have a cup of cake and taste the sweetness. So I'll look at the birds and go outside and notice, be now, be present, be alive. <laughs> and so I feel that we are always running somewhere and it's and this is the modern society. The change is quite rapid. I mean, I, right now I'm in a very fast expansion phase of my, my life. And I have to continuously remind myself to chill. <laughs> to just it's not so true. <laughs> yes. It's so true what you're saying. It's so true. It's, you know, that the purpose is for the cup of tea. The purpose is for that long walk. That is the purpose, you know, and, and to really slow down, uh, to really slow down and be in our in our in our humanity 
while rising into our authentic expression and truth. So Maria, I, I want to thank you so much for coming on. Let's tell the audience where they where they can check out your book and also your social media. The way I spell my name is M-A-R-I-Y-A S-A-H-I-Y-K-O dot love. That's my website, or just my first and last name on social media, Facebook or Instagram, Maria Shiko. So yeah. yes, I post regularly. I I have my own journey with social media. <laughs> yes, yes. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show and uh, inspiring us with joy and creativity and, and really bringing it back to the truth. Let's slow down. Let's step back. Let's connect with our creativity and with our joy and with our purpose. And that just may be having a cup of tea. Sounds so good. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> my pleasure. Yes, thank you so much. Wishing everyone a good weekend, everyone. Thanks so much for listening. We'll see you again next week. Take care. Bye-bye. You've been listening to the Cornelia Stephanie Show, Wake Up to Love, Your Call to Action. Tune in each week on Transformation Talk Radio. Cornelia's joy is to engage others in practical ways, showing us how to live in the new earth in harmony with our true nature. For more information on Cornelia and her extraordinary work, or to listen to past shows, go to her website at corneliastephanie.com.